Hello guys and welcome to TGM the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Sonic Adventure 2. In the last episode if you don't remember we went ahead and went through Meteor Herd and certainly had an interesting time there and in this episode Eggman has Amy held hostage and we need to go ahead and save her so let's go ahead and keep on moving. Oh, almost got hit there. But yeah, these little uh, robots, uh, I think I mentioned in the last episode, they're called Artificial Chaos. I think they're based off of Chaos from Sonic Adventure 1, and they are pretty annoying to deal with because they have these extending arms that can reach out and grab you, and it's just all around not a very fun time. off them, destroy all of those robots with that bomb, and I believe right here we should be getting another, or no, I, I'm thinking of a later, a later part of the level, it's very similar looking, you, you guys will see what I mean in a sec. Uh, rail grinding is something that I don't think I've talked about yet, even though it's appeared in a couple of different levels. Uh, it's something that's very iconic, I believe it started with this, and you know, it eventually, you know, the advanced games started doing it, and heroes started doing it and eventually became a big part of Sonic's identity. It's kind of messed up in the Sonic uh, Adventure 2 2012 Steam version, whoops, because it's the way that they do it, the way that you're supposed to do it I mean, is that you're supposed to, you know, tilt left and right uh, to go with or go against, or I forget exactly how it's supposed to go. Uh, when uh, when you're going down the rails and making turns. Calm down, Eggman. Uh, but in the 2012 Steam version, they made it so that the sensitivity is weird, so that if you move the stick left or right at all, Sonic will just flip over to the left or right, and it's very strange. Uh, here, I think this is where we're gonna get... Or, are we? Yeah, this is it. So, I believe we're gonna we're gonna get a new upgrade here. Uh, there we go. The flame ring allows us to use the fire somersault. So the somersault before, if you just press B, uh, you just roll into a ball. But now, when we do that, we can break open metal crates as well, or iron crates. Or I guess they're kind of sort of both, because like. Iron, all iron is metal, but not all metal is iron. So, these could technically, I guess, be a different type of metal. I don't even know why I'm going off on this tangent. This is a super cool part where we're light speed dashing through space. But yeah, we're, it really makes you feel like you're on a time limit here. Every two minutes, Eggman will uh, chime in saying, hey, get here faster or else so it really makes you feel a sense a sense of danger like you need to just get through it quickly without worrying about anything else and it's that's a feeling that Sonic Adventure 2 I think does really well in certain stages like in uh, the forest stage that we did after fighting Shadow uh, with that it came with an actual timer that showed how long you had left until the island exploded but in this case, it's more of a metaphorical timer, although we do still... Jeez. Uh, also, I love this next line by Eggman. I love the way that that's de delivered. You'll never leave this room alive. Ha <laughs> ha! I don't know why, it's just incredible. Uh, I love Eggman's voice actor in the adventure games. Uh, I believe in uh, Shadow the Hedgehog, they changed it to changed Eggman's voice actor to Mike Pollock, who also does an incredible job with Eggman's voice acting. Uh, but I do still uh, love Eggman's voice actor for the adventure games, who I do believe sadly passed away. So that's incredibly unfortunate. But I absolutely loved his work here in the adventure games. I don't know anything else he was in. Uh, or rather, I don't uh, know what else he's been in. Uh, very, 
similar sounding sentences, but quite different when you sort of sit and think about it. But yeah, this room is really weird and wacky, and I kind of love it. I think when uh, I first played through this game, I sort of uh, kind of got lost in this section, because I think I uh, got to a part that I shouldn't have been at, at a gravity setting that, you know, shouldn't be possible. I completely messed that up. The camera is sort of weird there. I clipped into a weird part there. Uh, come on, I gotta go through here again. just as great the second time. <laughs> Alright, we're pretty much where we were before, just got a light speed dash through here. Flip this to the side, and we're right back here. Now camera, please work with me. I'm gonna slowly walk down here this time. Flick that, I don't know what it does. Okay, so now I'm on the ceiling. Artificial chaos is being in artificial pain. That wasn't clever at all, but you know what? We're just gonna roll with it. Step on this, shoot out the rocket, and we are done with the level. Shut up, Owen Chow. Barely made it. Let's take care of business first, shall we, Sonic? Hand over the Chaos Emerald, slowly, and then we'll talk about your girlfriend. That is, if you really care for her. Handing over the fake Emerald? I can kill two birds with one stone! Put the Emerald down right there and back off! Turned into a big time villain, Doctor. <laughs> Whoa. You thought you could trick me with that fake empty, didn't you? So, how did you know it wasn't the real world? Tails! <laughs> because you just told me, Fox Boy. For a little space ride. The capsule clears the colony. Bam! I'm counting on you, Tails. Amy, take care of yourself. Farewell, Sonic the Hedgehog. Time for the rematch with Dr. Eggman. That cutscene is so cool, and probably one of my favorite cutscenes in the entire game. Uh, it just shows Eggman as a super threatening villain, and I love seeing that. In the IDW comics recently, uh, we get to see Eggman be a super imposing threat, and I super enjoy it when we get to see Eggman like that. And of course I don't want to- ah, crud, died. 
Luckily I have 14 lives, so I should be good this time around. Did a bit of damage to him there. I'm actually gonna follow Omocha's advice right here, gonna get- ah! He locked onto me when I was close to him or behind him. Ah! Guess that huge laser beam that does a bunch of damage to you. Cause you're stuck in there, so it's like... It's like in the Sans uh, boss fight in the Genocide Route of Undertale, where it's not like the damage, it's the attack itself does a bunch of damage, it's that you're stuck in there for a while, and it does a bunch of repeated damage to you. There we go. If I didn't do any damage to him right there, I would have been mildly upset. And he is down! some strange energy. Hey Sonic! Whoa, I wasn't sure if I could pull that one off. Somehow I managed to use the chaos control. Chaos control? Are you okay? I'm worried about Tails and Amy. I hate to ask, but could you help them? This is our last chance. I got it. Before the cannon fires, I'll slam dunk it in there. Final rush. This is the final level of the hero story for Sonic Adventure 2. Of course, we're gonna be doing the dark story after this and then the final story, but this still does feel final, you know? I forget exactly how many episodes I've recorded so far, because I'm doing these all in like a, in one session, so that's why my life, my life count remains consistent between episodes. Uh, or does it reset in this game? I forget. <laughs> Uh, here's a really cool part. If you can do this correctly, you can try to fall onto these rails way down here. And I did just that. There we go. This level is all about rail grinding and it's super cool, uh, especially if you're playing the original Dreamcast version and you can actually, you know, rail grind properly. I believe there is a mod that makes it so that rail grinding is like how it is in the boost era of games, where it is mostly, uh, how do I say, where you just hold down a button and you go faster, you don't need to worry about tilting and leaning. Uh, so if you want to install that mod, go ahead and do it. I didn't really install one because I don't want to install too many mods uh, when it comes to games because I want to play them how they originally were, and, I, and if I don't really like a game without too many mods, then I don't know if I really like that game at all much. Uh, second of all, I suck at installing mods, just because, like, I tried to, uh, on my other computer, tried to install mods for SA2 onto there, and so that it would be kind of more like the original Dreamcast, and just see how that looked and see if I wanted to do that, but I... It's either I'm not good at following instructions, or the or the instructions I read weren't that great, or maybe a mix of both. It was probably bad on my part, I shouldn't go around blaming other people. It's most likely my bad. Uh, but yeah, I just couldn't really get them to work, so... Yeah, I'll just have to deal with the wonkiness of the Steam port for now. I can't believe I failed at that. Uh, it can be a bit weird to jump on these platforms because when you get anywhere close to the edge, uh, Sonic immediately tries to go into his uh, about-to-fall animation, but for some reason here, 
that animation overrides most controls, so it freezes you in place, and so it stops you from jumping, and so you're still holding uh, forward after that, and so you just kind of go flying off the edge there. So my apologies that I fell off there. Uh, then, I, then again, I almost did it again there. Alrighty, jumping from rail to rail here. Uh, there's not much commentary I can put over this. Uh, I'll just talk again about how much I love the story. Again, those cutscenes were great. It's cool to see how uh, how they kept Tails' character arc from the first game and sort of added it on, added on to it in this game where he is still like he still is a bit timid uh but you know he's trying his hardest to be you know as much of his own man as he possibly can be uh and you know he came up with a plan of the fake chaos emeralds without tails we definitely would not have been able to uh you know get anywhere close to finding out about eggman's plans and going into outer space uh, and so yeah Tails is definitely becoming his own character and unfortunately that sort of kind of resets when it comes to heroes and you know Tails's character arc is something that has been talked about a lot when it comes to the 2010 Sonic games uh, especially Sonic Forces uh, but that's enough about talk about future Sonic games, considering, you know, that's one thing that I struggle with when introducing people to media, especially, oh hey, Mystic Melody, uh, these little things right here, if you press B near them when you have the Mystic Melody, it creates new paths, like this line of rings right here. It does much cooler things for other stages, it's just in here, there's not much that they could do. Without breaking the level but yeah that's something that I struggle with or at least that I fear that I'll struggle with when it comes to introducing people to media like when I do YouTube for you guys or when I'm introducing friends and family to you know different film series and stuff like that uh, but yeah I'm always just like I fear about giving my opinion because I don't even know what happened there. I'm scared about giving my opinion when introducing thing people to media because, you know, depending on, uh, you know, the person, sometimes they, you know, they'll hear an opinion and they can't get that idea out of their head so they enjoy something less or more. And I am definitely sometimes guilty of that so maybe that's why I freak out about it so much. Uh, but yeah, that is something that I'm trying to better about myself that I struggle with, where sometimes I'll hear someone say, hey, this piece of media is bad, and if I, you know, if I listen to it enough, eventually that forms my opinion on it. And yeah, that's definitely something I'm trying to do better at, because I am easily swayed by the opinions of others. Um, or someone will be like, this thing is bad, and I'm just like, okay, and sometimes my brain just, you know, goes with that. And it's something that I do not like about myself. Like, I know people will think that I'm just someone who goes along with the trends of whatever is popular. But it's definitely something that I see myself uh, doing that I think is very bad and I want to not do in the future. I want to, you know, stand by my principles and be a man of... And, you know, think of my own opinions. Uh, this part is super cool. We're running down the side of this building, kind of like the first level of the hero story. And that is the end of the final level of the hero story for Sonic Adventure 2. Now we just have a boss fight and then the ending cutscene. Well, we have a cutscene, the final boss fight, then the ending cutscene, and then we'll be completely done. Barely made it. Completely done with the hero story, not the game in general. You guys know what I mean.
You never cease to surprise me, Brew Hedgehog. I thought that capsule you were in exploded in space. You know, space. what can I say? I die hard. You actually saved me, you know. It was a Chaos Emerald, wasn't it? But there's no way you could have activated the Chaos Control using an emerald that's fake. So, there's more to you than just looking like an emerald. What are you, anyway? What you see is what you get. Just a guy that loves adventure. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog! I see. But you know, I can't let you live. Your adventure days are coming to an end. Time for the rematch against Shadow the Hedgehog. So this boss fight is extremely iconic, that cutscene we just saw was extremely iconic. With all of these extremely iconic scenes, let's get into the finale for the hero story of Sonic Adventure 2. I almost said Sonic the Hedgehog, but no, that's the character, not the name of the game. So for the first few hit the for the first three hits, you can just spin dash into him and that'll be fine, but after these, he'll start dodging them. So what you want to do is you want to sort of lag behind him, and then spin dash. And then when he does that attack, roll into him. Uh, I completely failed there because I suck, but you, you get what you're supposed to do. He'll teleport in front of you. Go up ahead. And roll right into him and he'll be done. So now we just have one more hit, you just do the exact same thing, and once you do that, you'll be done. There we go. Game over, Shadow. Sonic, I did it! Awesome job, Tails! Sonic! Huh? Look outside! Ooh. That is the end of the hero story of Sonic Adventure 2. I feel like I've said that a ton of times, but you know what? I keep trying to have like a definitive final sentence and it's kind of hard because, you know, I wanted to say it at the end of the final level and then the final boss fight and now during the credits. Uh, right here during the credits, we have, of course, we get to see different scenes from throughout the game, along with, you know, obviously the credits. Uh, but in the background, we have a remixed version of It Doesn't Matter Sonic's theme from Sonic Adventure 1. Uh, this is referred to as Sonic... It, it's referred to as It Doesn't Matter version 2. Uh, of course, the Adventure 1 version is version 1. Uh, you can debate... Well, I don't really want to start a debate on which one's better. I like this one uh, more, uh, but I also love the Sonic Adventure 1 version. I think both are incredible. Uh, Crush 40 does really good with these uh, songs in these games, or I should say they did good. because They haven't really been hired to do a song for a Sonic game in like, god, like 17 years, something close to that. I don't know, I'll put up on screen when the last time they did it was. Uh, but this was super good. Uh, of course, obviously this isn't the end. We're gonna see the credits like twice more after this. Uh, but for the hero story in general, this was really fun to go through. This went by a lot quicker than I remembered. Uh, and 
Yeah, I think they do a really good job at hooking you in on the story and making you want to actually see what the villains were doing. And we'll definitely get to see that in later episodes. We'll get to see how Eggman acquired uh, six of the Chaos Emeralds, how he met Shadow, how they met Rouge, and just a ton of stuff that we're going to see in the future. Hopefully, hopefully you guys will stick around for that and enjoy it. So thank you guys so much for watching. And in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and go along with the dark story. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.